what do you get from reviews? It's sort of a poll. Let's think of this as a poll. So reviews from YouTube channels, reviews from online sites, and print magazine reviews. You read them or watch them. What do you get? What do you want from reviews? Now, as someone who's read my share and watched my share of reviews over my life, to tell you the truth, what I want from reviews of <clears throat> audio or food or wine, or, I, I primarily want entertainment. Now, that may not be what a lot of you are thinking, right? You're thinking, I want to learn something, I want information, I want numbers, I want facts. Sure, that's what you want, and I'm just saying what I want. That's why this can be a discussion among yourselves down there below and me. Uh, what is the purpose of a review? Now, I say this because I've been doing this a while. I've been reviewing 20-something uh, years, 22, 23 years. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So, um, and what did I learn from doing so many reviews? I, re I learned that most stuff, speakers, electronics, is, is good. It's all good. There's few really bad ones. Um, so most stuff is pretty good. Some stuff is a little better. Some stuff is stands out because it's really good, really good sounding, or it's really well made, or there's a really great story that goes along with the product, why this is such a cool product. You know, like Zoo. When I first came upon Zoo speakers that are made in Utah in, I think, 2007, it was a large, uh, it was a tower speaker with a single... 10 and, 10 and a quarter inch full range driver and a tweeter below it. It was super dynamic. It had great mid range. It was a fun speaker. It was a party speaker. And I just felt, and, and here's the thing there was no other speaker like a zoo that I was aware of at that time, and more or less still at the kind of prices. There are other speakers with full range drivers, but they don't really do what Zoo does, and they're not usually U.S. made, if that matters to you or not. So anyway, in many ways, it was a unique speaker, a unique company, and that that perks up my ears because I go, oh, this is cool. I'm not just doing the another box speaker, another. No, this has a story with it. Same with MagnaPan, full range, flat panel speakers with ribbons. Again, it's not to say there's nothing like it. It's just not pretty rare. Most speakers are box speakers. They're not panel speakers. So again, my ears, yeah, I want to do that. And, and they're really good. And they're made in America. And they're not crazy expensive. So MagnaPan is pretty special, right? Shit Audio is another one, you know? Really cool stuff. Made the U.S. Made really well. Sounds really good cool looking, doesn't look like anything else. Yeah, I want to do more of those. So when I find a, a company that makes cool products, they're not crazy expensive, that sound really good, yeah, I'm onto that. ELAC was another one. But the thing is, there's not an endless supply of companies like that. There are other companies that do really good things, they, they have a story, but not to the point of, un of a unique quality like the companies I just listed. Klipsch. Uh, tell me about those other companies that make horn speakers um, at very affordable prices. Um, not too many, especially ones with uh, mid-range and tweeter horns for around $2,000 for a heresy. Mm, no, not too many in, in the universe that I live in. So again, I get excited about Klipsch. Very high sensitivity speakers, party speakers. They, again, that's... That's how I'm picking speakers to review. So anyway, when there's a story, there's entertainment factor. Why is this so cool? Why is it special? That's, that's what I'm looking for as a, as a reviewer and also as a reader. If I can find by reading other people's reviews really cool products or companies approach me with really cool products that are special in some way, beyond sounding good, beyond being well-made, beyond being attractively priced, when all those boxes are checked, Yes, I get excited and I want to do a review like the one I just did on the Emotiva Air Motor B1 Plus. It's $229 a pair, has a folded ribbon tweeter, sounds really good. I'll link to the review below. But again, I've never heard another speaker that for $229 does what the B1 Plus does so, so well. 
So, again, I'm, I'm sort of conflating here what I want out of reviews of audio and other things that I read, like movie reviews. I want to know what's cool, what's interesting about this movie. Not just, yeah, Jane went to the store and the car blew up and, you yeah. know, it's just the summary. I want to know, oh, this director, he's so incredible, his cinematography, he uses black and white film. Give me something to grab onto that makes it different than all the other movies that are out right now. Again, this is what I'm looking for. So I want to hear from you guys what you want from, let's just, in terms of the commentary, what you want out of audio reviews. And where do you get them? And tell me who they are and why you like them. Now, of course, some people read reviews because they're going to buy something. They're, sh they're shopping, mentally at least, shopping. Like, I'm looking to buy fill-in-the-blank, speaker, amplifier, DAC, phone on cartridge, whatever. I'm looking to buy it. I'm going to look around reviews online, on YouTube, in stores, and um, I want to buy something. And one of the ways I'm going to find out what to buy is by reading review. And one of the ways I'm going to find the thing that I'm looking for is by reading reviews. Absolutely valid. A really good way to go. Of course, after you find the thing that seems potentially interesting, getting to hear it, mm, that's, that's a little tougher in 2020. But if you're lucky and have a local or semi-local dealer that's, that carries that product so you can hear it before you buy it, that's really good. And I hope you take advantage of that. Failing that, you're going to buy it online from a dealer or a company that just sells direct and hear it at home and hopefully have return privileges if it's not up to your expectations. So buying, uh, doing shopping or learning or uh, research, as some people call it, to find what they're looking for. When I can help out, when my reviews help people do that, and I hear from you guys uh, all the time that my reviews are helpful in that way, that's fantastic. I love hearing that, and it, makes, it gives me satisfaction to know that I can help people find cool stuff. I think there's another angle here that I want to toss out to you guys, and that is, okay, you don't have a local dealer. If you, well, if you have a local dealer, definitely try them first, right? Okay, you don't have a local dealer. You have a dealer that's in your state or is a few hundred miles away. And it's not, you're not going to go there, right? But you call them up on the phone, remember phones, or, okay, or email them and, and establish some sort of rapport with a dealer that you feel like that dealer understands you and what you're looking for and what your needs are and what you want out of this thing that you're going to buy. And, you know, you take the plunge and you buy it, and it was good. The dealer's advice to you was, was, was extremely helpful and led you to a decision, and you bought the product, and it worked out really well, and you thought the service was, was really good, right? I think finding a dealer or dealers that you can establish a rapport with <clears throat> and trust them, I think that, again, in this time of ours, where brick-and-mortar dealers are relatively rare, when you can find a dealer that you can trust long distance, uh, that, that may be great. That may be it, you know. And I would say once you've established that with a dealer, when it comes time to buy the next thing, whatever that thing is, yeah, do your research and look at reviews online and YouTube and stuff. But call up the dealer. Say, hey, hey, Joe, you know, I'm looking for a new cartridge. What do you think? What do you have? What do you recommend? Because you've already established that relationship with that person. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for a new cartridge. What do you got? And he says, well, we got blah, blah, blah. This is what this does. This is what this does. I think you'd really like this based on our previous conversations. I think that's, that's a great thing. And I hope, I hope that's going to work for some of you guys. And to tell you the truth, I think that, may be better than actually reading the reviews and going by what, you know, John the reviewer has to say about a given product. Because John the reviewer is just writing about his experience, right? He doesn't know what you want. He doesn't know your needs, your, the size of your room, what kind of music you play, uh, other stuff in your system. He's just telling you what he experienced. And in my reviews, I'm telling you what I experienced. And I hope, I do that my experience is in some way transferable or I can communicate what I liked about it in a universal enough way that it can, it can sink into enough people out there. That's what I'm trying to do in reviews, right? But when you, when you have a connection 
with a dealer with experience with lots of stuff and they know what you like I put more faith in in that in the dealer than what I say or a reviewer says any reviewer says oh I, I just want to throw in one other thing about reviews uh, I know that a lot of people are are looking for reviews of products uh, to look for some consensus uh, read as many reviews as possible of a given thing that you might consider buying uh, I understand why on the surface that's a good idea but I think in practice just just go with reviewers who you have a track record with who you've come to trust that's what really matters it's not a quantity of reviews it's the quality of them I mean sure if you read 32 reviews of the same product and we're all raves yeah okay sure but you also waste a lot of time hunting down those reviews so just just go with reviews just go with reviewers who you trust so my name is Steve Guttenberg this is the audiophiliac daily show which right now is coming to you five or six times a week if you like it that's cool give these things a thumbs up if they deserve it thumbs down if you think they deserve that um, check out my playlist because speaking of reviews I've got lots I have reviews of speakers of headphones of music of electronics components you name it there's there's lots of them already here uh, and by the way I've done <laughs> thousands of reviews that are online for other places so before you uh, put in a comment Steve what about this Google Audiophiliac and the name of that product and it might already exist not just here but in other places so Google Steve Guttenberg and you know ELAC uh, B652 or something and you will see whether or not I have reviewed it and there's I wouldn't say there's a good chance but there's a fair chance that I've already done the review <laughs> anyway so you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac man you can also check me out on Instagram at Steve Guttenberg you can also look at my stuff on patreon at P a T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac and after all of that all that's left I can't give you any more all I can say is thank you so much for watching and I hope, I really do, to see you back here again very, very soon.